There is a castle located on a hill. Inside the castle a lady is seen kneeling in front of the statue. She looks weak and is praying to God. She prays to God saying that there is a time she hated him but she wants another chance in life because she is truly naive and gullible. She coughs out blood and weakly continues saying if she is given another chance, she will not make the same stupid mistakes again. The lady collapses to the ground and as her eyes are closing, she cries saying she doesn't want to die like this. In the castle, a young lady woke up, and wonders if she fell asleep after collapsing and breathing is now more comfortable now that she slept deeply. She thinks of what happened and screams at surprise upon seeing her reflection in the mirror. The lady looks at her long hair and young skin in shock and wonders if she came back to life. She became agitated, picks up a flower vase and smashes it, yelling this is not what she wished for. Her name is Bianca de Arno, and she is the Countess of Arno of Sovrang. It is rumored within the county, that Bianca is an evil wife, while her husband, Count Zachary de Arno is the loyal vassal of the King of Sovrang, and also the right-hand man of the First Prince of Gautier. While the Count risks his life on the battlefield, he had dresses made for Bianca every day and bought her jewelry carved by Sovrang's greatest artisan jewelers. But all Bianca would do is to stay in her room whole day, occasionally screaming like a maniac and break valuable furniture. Two servants are discussing about it in the hallway, as it has been several days since Bianca stopped eating or allow them to clean her room. One of the servants said that four days have passed, and wonder if they should go in to check on Bianca, however the other servant with blonde hair disagreed, saying that it will be good for the nation if something happens to Bianca, as the Count has suffered because of her and she should be punished. The story explains that the position of Lord of Arno frequently changes over the years, and the people has suffered immensely but everything became better after Count Zachary became the new lord. Bianca's husband, Count Zachary, is someone who is frugal and committed. He made a lot of money at war, and it is widely speculated that he will continue to do so, making the country prosper and richer in future, while his wife Bianca lives luxuriously, lavishing and wasting all the money he has made. They are married for over nine years but Bianca harassed the Count so much that they never shared the same bed. The battlefield is a place where no one knows what will happen, and one could lose their head while fighting, or other times through a wicked and dirty plot, one could risk losing his life. The yellow hair maid continues saying how they have suffered without a lord in the castle, how the Count and the Madam have been married for nine years, and what would happen to them if something happens to the Count as there is no air currently. And finally wondering what is going on in the Bianca's mind. Meanwhile, Bianca is in her room knitting her time away. She admires it and calls it a lace, explaining that it became popular when she turned age 30 and she learned how to do it by hand at the monastery. She squeezes the lace firmly, realizing it was not a dream. Bianca barged out of her room, shocking the maids in the hallway while she rushes. The two maids were worried if she heard everything they had been discussing. A man is seen in a library, and he is Vincent, the butler of Arno. Bianca barges in screaming, asking him how old she is this year, making him shocked. He nervously corrects her that his name is Vincent not Vinky and tells her she is 18 this year. Bianca became frustrated over the fact that she is only 18 and furiously asks for the count, which Vincent replies that the count has went to war months ago. Vincent wonders why being a wife, she does not know the Count whereabouts, and wonders what she is thinking about. Bianca continues to scream at him, asking if he knows when the Count will return, and Vincent replied the last time he receives word from the Count, he said he would return in the winter. Hearing this, she ponders about it and told Vincent that she has a request. She explains her hatred for the cold, and requests a fox pelt from a silver fox, making Vincent disappointed. She frowns at him, and he replies that he understands her request as she took her leave. Vincent recalled the words of the Count, telling him to prepare and give everything Bianca wants, as she was raised more preciously than anyone else in Blanchefort since young. She left everything there the moment she married him so he needs to take care of her. Count Zachary wants to give her the best of everything she desires, since that is his duty as her husband. Upon hearing this, Vincent became worried and wonders if the Count said it without knowing how lavishly she lives. 
If marriage is a business, then the Count's marriage is one that is yet to have any benefit, and it is completely ruined. Several days later, Bianca receives her fox pelt as requested, making her smile brightly and praising Vincent for always giving her the best every time. Vincent replied that if she wants to praise him, she should at least know his name. He informed her that he received word from the Count after their last conversation, making Bianca's face lit up with bright eyes. Vincent told her the Count has arrived in the county. She looks at Vincent while picking up her pelt. It is explained that Bianca is an immature, frivolous, and an evil wife, that has no interest in her husband and the day she will be called Saint Bianca of Arno is a story that will not come true. She puts on her pelt and walks out to the castle balcony looking into the sky. Bianca stretches her hands, and yells saying she came back to life, and came back to Arno. She will treasure her second chance in life this time, as her promise to God. She was confident that she will not repeat the same stupid mistake again. Meanwhile, the Count is standing miles away from the castle looking through a binocular, while being asked by his commander how he feel returning to the castle after a long time of being away. The Count ignores his question and replied that his wife Bianca is screaming away at the sky as he watched from his binocular. The commander is confused, while the Count stares in surprise exclaiming that Bianca looks well and healthy. Back at the Arno castle, the guards spotted groups of people traveling towards them with their military flag, making them announce the arrival of the Black Wolf army lead by Count Zachary. The Count and his fleet of army is seen entering the castle walls and it is announced that Count Zachary is back. Count Zachary's nickname is Berserker because when his silver hair is covered in blood in battlefield, he looks like a well-forged blade. He stares up at his wife's balcony while his hair is said to be the fear of his enemies in battlefield. Vincent and two other assistants came out to welcome the return of their count and informed Count Zachary that his meal is prepared at the banquet hall, which the count thanked him. The count praises his army for traveling a long distance and told them to fill up their stomach which made them happy. One of the castle assistants asks the knights how the expedition went, and he answered that it was smooth sailing and they missed out a lot by not being there. His name is Sover, one of Arno's commander. He further tells the assistant that he missed the chance to witness his awesomeness at the battlefield. Another of Arno's commander with silver hair is Gasper, and the last one is Robert, who told Sover not to but instead Sover brags more of saving Robert's life in battle making Robert regret. Meanwhile Bianca walked towards them from the castle, and is behind Sover while he keeps bragging about himself. She makes her presence known, shocking them, and taking them aback. Savior was in shock and started stuttering. They started bowing to greet Bianca and told her it is nice to see her. Bianca asks for the Count while searching with her eyes, which Sova replied that the Count is in his room and he likes to bath first before eating and doing anything else. She turns and heads straight to his room leaving them all in shock. Savior started whispering to the other commanders, how grown the Count's wife has become and exclaimed that her material desires must have gotten bigger, while she was growing up after seeing the white fox fur on her. Bianca hurriedly runs through the stairs to meet the Count, while Robert stops Sover from judging what the Count permitted. Gasper finally speaks, wondering why she is looking for the Count. He was told that it is obvious since it is the first time, she came out to meet the Count after his return from an expedition. As she walks, Bianca wonders how many years it has been since she has seen her husband but since she wants to have an important discussion with him, she needs to face him with confidence. She peeks in the door space and wonders if he is talking to someone. Bianca saw Count Zachary taking off this shirt, showing off his toned muscles, while talking about the reorganizing of his estate upon his return. He told Vincent to prepare them this year, and to prepare next year's budget, as he will need to check before he goes to sleep which Vincent agrees to. Count Zachary notices Bianca behind the door and calls out to her, who was covering her face ashamed. She shyly responds that the door was left open and she was not trying to peek at him. He picks up his coat and asks Bianca why she is here, and if there is anything urgent but also told her that if she needs something, she can always ask for Vincent as usual, making Bianca frown at him. Bianca asks Count Zachary if it must be something important in order to see him. She told him she heard of his return and she came to see him because she is his wife. 
This statement made Count Zachary stare coldly at Bianca and Vincent is left speechless. She thinks back how cold and scary the Count can be, and started frowning why he is not saying anything in return. She wonders if he is annoyed by her, because she came suddenly while he is busy and tired. Making Bianca think of leaving and coming back the following day but she remembers her promise to God, not to repeat the same mistakes like the past, when she was dying in her previous life. Bianca told Vincent directly to excuse them for a moment as she needs to see the count which Vincent complied and stood behind the door eavesdropping on their conversation. In the room with the count, he asks what it is not believing that a day like this would come that she will want to talk to him. He folds his hands akimbo and stares at her asking what it is while she nervously responds that it has been nine years since they are married and she will turn nineteen after this winter so she wants to do all of a wife's duties. He exclaims in confusion and asks what she means, making her lean towards him and tells him she is ready to give birth to his heir. She explains her reason that there are times when a lady's life is controlled by marriage. The father and male siblings will take care of the lady before marriage and after marriage the husband and his family will be responsible for the safety of the lady. A noble lady who has no father, no siblings, no husband's family and who could not see her own successor will be miserable. She faces him with a frank face telling him she will bear his child making him carefully think about this and responds that he is honestly flustered. He then stares at her and asks if she knows what to do to have a baby which makes her frown at him for making her feel like a child. She wonders how she cannot know even if her body is 18 years old and her mind has lived longer and died before him. However, she still remembers sharing a room with him in her previous life when she was 20 years and how he persistently tormented her in bed. She finally comes out of her thoughts and replies to him that she knows what it takes since she heard things from the maids. She nervously informs him that her duty is to give birth to the next Count of Arno, so of course she should know while his eyes widen and he asks if she can do it. He moves towards her asking if she can do the things that she knows with him with that method. She leans on the wall and he leans closer and asks if she can have a child making her become nervous. She shyly looks away and reasons how angry he looks not expecting him to welcome the idea at first. He leans further making her shy and more nervous while she exclaims how scary he is. He sighs after sensing this and asks if she is still scared of him snapping her out of her deep thoughts. He finally leans back and tells her to go get some rest as he also does but she cuts him which he resisted instantly telling her they will talk later while opening the door. She becomes terrified realizing what will happen if she does not have a baby. Being thrown out of the house and left to wander all alone which makes her disagree with the thought. She stops his hands from reaching the door knob while calling out to him, making him stare at her. She proceeds to ask how much their wedding was as they stare into each other's eyes. He shoves his hands away while she stares nervously at him waiting for an answer. He lists the items given as dowry and he informs her that it was Arno's two years of budget. The dowry is the money that the bride brings to the groom's house when she marries and it is like a legacy that the wife's parents give in advance to support the bride. Feeling downcast, she never thinks she will be able to list them that easily but the situation whereby one would memorize the exact amount is a situation where the groom is kicked out and the bride gets a new marriage and they will have to return the bride back with the dowry. She thinks of all these and finally accepts that the rumors of the count having a mistress is right. She tells him not to worry about breaking up with the girl and can comfortably have a relationship with her. This makes him confused and he asks her for clarification which makes her reply that she can put the mistress under her if he wants and offers to pay the dowry, he bought her for. She frowns at his expression and concludes he must be feeling embarrassed of himself while he thinks of how angry he feels when his wife talks about a mistress. He sighs and replies that he does not know who talks to her about that kind of crap and they will talk naturally about a successor when time comes as it is a useless discussion now. She fires words at him but instead he calls out to Vincent knowing well he is still at the front of the door and tells him to guide the madam out which Vincent concurs and informs the madam. He drags her by the hand while she calls out to the count but he pays deaf ears. She screams telling him it is important but Vincent successfully takes her out leaving the count to himself in thought. He rubs his face deep in thought, sighs and recalls the nanny dying of an epidemic disease. 
The nanny came with Bianca from Blanche Fort and that is the only person she opens up to. She lost her appetite and has been crying all day. When she comes back from war, she stops him and tells him if he comes back from the battlefield he should have looked for her after he takes off his armor. In tears, she exclaims that he reeks of blood. In reality, he picks up her pelt and recalls that she would cry whenever she made eye contact with him when she first came and she would always avoid him when he returns from the battlefield saying he smelled like blood. He recalls her being like that but remembers her touching him like nothing happened. He sniffs his own body and thinks he smelled like something she did not like since he hasn't washed yet and also thinks of the kind of chance she might have gotten when he was away. Vincent is seen escorting the madam back to her quarters. As she walks angrily, she recalls sharing bed with the Count when she was twenty years old and after that they only slept together only when he left for war which led to them not having a successor and when she was twenty-five the Count who went to the battlefield and never came back. She further recalls that the Count is destined to die seven years from now and full of rage she concludes having to bear a child before then even if she must make the first move. She thinks of creating another opportunity as soon as possible and tries to gather the will to be with the Count. Vincent finally speaks out about wanting to escort the madam to her room which makes her turn furiously at him yelling that she will go on her own. She shoves him out of the way and angrily walks away while Vincent looks at her noticing her fox pelt missing. Later that day, she reminisces in her room about what she needs to do to have a child but reasons that the Count will not make a move and even if she goes to him, he would just send her back. She recalls the sight of his body to be much taller and scarier and wonders if it was that muscular and recollects that she would not have known since she mostly sees his body during the dark. Still in thought, she wonders how hard it will be to seduce the Count with her underdeveloped body even though there was not much difference when she was fully grown then which doesn't have any feeling of fullness or softness. She proceeds to think of him having another lover. She reminisces on the dowry he mentioned earlier and wonders how hard it would have been to memorize it thereby concluding that he is preparing to return her and her dowry back so that the woman will become the new Countess of Arno. All these feelings make her feel disgusting. The Count suddenly comes behind her and wraps her with the fox pelt saying she left it in his room. She looks in amazement while he proceeds to tell her it looks good on her. He pats her on the shoulder while she stares at him brightly which he proceeds to thank her for today. He walks away leaving her still in shock as she tries to process the recent event. She wonders what he is thankful for. She looks at her pelt and wonders why he talked about it suddenly, also wondering if he is rebuking her for buying something expensive. She squeezes on her pelt as recollects the same event happening sometimes in the past. She is given a squirrel pelt which is complained of by her nanny. She complains that Bianca gets cold easily and she always had the finest mink pelt back home. She blasts him for being the worst count and different from Count Blanchefort. Young Bianca is seen looking blankly while her nanny continues to rant about her miss being married to someone from a pathetic home saying she could have been a duchess instead of a countess. Finally, the count ignores all her rants and tells her if she needs anything she can ask Vincent. Her nanny never hides any complaint regarding the count and following that day, the count had many victories at war and created a rich county which could provide anything the madam wished for without difficulty. Bianca smiles thinking about the count's words realizing she has never heard those words from him before and concluding he must have been surprised when she went to see him after returning from war. She couldn't believe how composed he used to be even when her nanny troubles him and as he takes his bath, she reveals that this is the first time the Count would reveal his feelings to her. She concludes that if she meets the Count more often, she will be able to change his mind regarding an heir and promises to pounce on him when it happens. The next, the castle becomes noisy about the event that happened before. They talked about the madam going to meet the Count at the garden and went to his room afterwards and how the Count brought out her pelt afterwards. They wonder what could have happened in the room but conclude it is nothing. Three maids are cleaning the castle hallway and one of the maids happily replies that something good must be going on since the madam is going to be an adult and it would not be strange if she has a child soon. Another one of the maids replies that she sees hope of their relationship becoming better and the madam might have changed her mind. The yellow-haired maid smirks and mockingly asks what will change if the madam changes her mind. She calls the madam a gloomy woman which makes the other two maids terrified. 
One of them cautions her about someone hearing but she is carefree and continues by calling the madam a gloomy woman who does as she pleases. She mocks how the madam screams in her room and acts finicky and proudly exclaims that she can warm the count's bed better than the madam. Unknowing to her, the madam is in the corner behind them while the other maids continue to caution her that her choices of words are rude to the count and the madam. The madam approaches the yellow-haired maid while she keeps saying that is the truth calling the madam's skin as cold as her personality. She keeps calling the madam sorts of names but is finally cut short when the madam shows up behind her, tells her to clench her teeth and gives her a resounding slap. From Bianca's point of view, she is sitting making her lace material when a lady comes before her asking what is doing in a place like that alone and it is revealed that the lady is working for Bianca which makes her live in the castle with as well which makes Bianca furious and wonders if she is the count's mistress. The lady smiles at Bianca telling her she and the count will take good care of Arno in her place so she can stay in her room like always. Bianca imagines the lady in a romantic hug with the count while count responds that they should take their time having an heir and if she needs anything like always, she can ask Vincent. This statement leaves Bianca in utmost shock as she responds that he is the only one who can give her what she really needs. She keeps calling the count as it is revealed that she is having a nightmare. She wakes up confused and sits up and wonders why her dream is so real and asks if suffers from the trauma of the previous day. She bows her head and thinks of not knowing when the government will strike even if the Count rarely shows his feelings, making her decide to meet the Count more often so they can talk about having an heir or attack him. She steps out of her room while thinking of how shameful it is to beg for a child but that is the only option she has now. She walks down the hallway where the maids are as she overhears the yellow-haired maids speak bad about her while the other maids caution her. Bianca peeks at them from the corner listening to the words coming from the yellow-haired maid. This continues, till she mentions being better than Bianca at warming the Count's bed which angers Bianca greatly. Bianca reasons that the maid calling her a gloomy woman who is tainting the family are words she can pass over like nothing but she cannot listen to it any longer thereby moving towards the maid and giving her the resounding slap. The maid is shocked while the mistress recalls her words and reveals to the maid that aside from being as cold as a frog or snake, she is also a venomous snake while the maid is still in shock. The madam rolls up her sleeves telling the maid she has a loud mouth and faces the other maid requesting for a stick. She faces the yellow and tells her how unlucky she is because she was in a bad mood beforehand making the maid terrified. Bianca tells the maid with a mean look that she is not going to let her off easily while the other maid brings the stick to the madam. Bianca collects the stick while reasoning that she could have let it go if they were just laughing at her but the maid was comparing her to herself a mere maid. Bianca tells the maid to stretch out her hands which makes the maid tremble. She stretches them shaking in fear while Bianca wipes her for comparing her lowly self with her master. Other maids feel pity for the yellow-haired maid as Bianca lashes her for listening to rumors about her master making the yellow-haired maid shed hot tears. She lashes her for having a light mouth and slandering her masters while other maids and followers watch. One of the followers requests for the butler and as Bianca is about to lash her for desiring her master, her hand is stopped midway by one of the knights. She stares at him furiously. It is Robert and he asks her what she is doing which prompts her asking who he is, making him surprised. It is explained that there is no single person that does not know the three commanders under Zachary de Arno and Sir Robert is a loyal knight who serves the Count even before the lady arrived. Sir Robert wonders why the madam does not know his name even if she cares little about the Count but he responds to her that his name is Sir Robert while still holding her hand as she frowns at him. Bianca thinks of the name and recollects it being one of the Count's three commanders and she replies to him that she is disciplining the maid so he should let go of her hand which Sir Robert replies the lashing to be too severe. Sir Robert continues by saying he cannot watch the madam treat someone like an animal, even if she is their master while others look on in amazement. The yellow-haired maid thinks of how this happened and how she is just stating the truth with an evil frown. The madam tells Sir Robert that the maid is chattering about how extravagant and improper she is which is true but she is not going to accept being insulted. This makes Sir Robert's reaction change as she continues that the maid called her an awful wife and she can enter the madam's husband's chamber instead. This causes a regret stare on the maid's face. 
Someone asks what this ruckus is, making everyone look in his direction surprised. It is the Count and they all wonder what he is doing there as they bow to him. Bianca stares at him and wonders what he is doing here currently while the yellow-haired maid laughs happily thinking the Count has come to help her. It is explained that the Count is a generous man who gave sacks of wheat to his wheat thief. A thief who is supposed to have his wrist cut off. Bianca stares at the maids after seeing her laugh and stares fiercely at the Count thinking she is one of his lovers while he just stares blankly at her. He stares at her hand and examines it before calling out to her and asking her if her hand is okay. Bianca looks at her hands only to realize she incurred some injuries while lashing the maid previously but she hides it pretending to be fine. The Count instructs Vincent, also known as Beng Sang to call a doctor to treat the madam but Bianca declines and tells them to treat the maid's face instead. Bianca proceeds to challenge the Count if the maid is his lover while explaining that she is just educating people and does not think she is going too far but will stop for the day as the maid is the one who can warm his bed instead of her. She shoves the stick to Sir Robert and walks away angrily but Vincent stops her to ask about the treatment making her reply harshly for just beating a servant, ask if there is anything they want to talk about and tell them to cure the maid's face. Everyone is taken aback as she walks away. The Count calls out to the maid asking what she did which the maid replies tearfully that she was mopping the floor diligently but is cut short by him saying she was mopping diligently and his wife suspects that she is his love. He gives her a devilish look making her scared and he finally calls out to Beng Sang and instructs him that there should be no noise in the castle. He walks away while they bow, then Vincent tells the maid to prepare to go home telling her he has heard rumors of her and a servant's virtue is being careful with her mouth. This shocks her deeply as Vincent reveals that her mouth is too loud and this place is not fit for her so she needs to leave. She screams in hot tears begging the butler but he pays deaf ears to her. Vincent reaches where Sir Robert stands and asks him what he is doing out here which Sir Robert replies that he saw the madam clenching her hand at the maid and she is worth being angry after being insulted like that by the maid. However, he continues that it is surprising that she raised his hands without quietly passing it over and she is someone who has no interest in things inside or outside the house but the madam did nothing but stay in the room or buy things. Vincent comments that what the madam did today was the duty of a hostess but one certain thing is that she changed her attitude towards the count. Later that day, the madam lies down on her back on the bed while covering her face with her injured palm. She swings her other hand while thinking of how much pain she is feeling and if her hand is swollen like that, then the maid's hands will like yeast which makes her feel refreshed. She wonders if the Count is trying to comfort the maid by kissing her swollen hands and whispering that one day, he will drive her away and give the maid the place of Countess. She flips over on the bed in pain as she touches her pelt beside her. It is explained that the madam opened her heart to Gian, her nanny who came with her from Arno and the nanny passed away five years ago so there has been no maid to look after her or support her. The one who tells this story is the person who sweeps and wipes the front of the madam's room and she has no choice but to just watch from afar how the madam endure pain alone in loneliness. The madam is alerted of someone calling out to her from behind the door which makes her sit up asking who it is. A maid shows up smiling with a bowl and towel as she responds that she will bring her a poultice with herbal water that will make the swelling and heat on her hand go away. The maid drops the bowl and tells the madam if she does not want to see a doctor then she can have a poultice like this and asks the madam to trust her just once as she will make the madam's wound go away quietly and quickly. She says all these with an appealing smile making the madam finally agree to her request. She massages the madam's hands which the madam reacts because of the pain but the maid assures her to be gentler. The madam looks calm and thinks of how warm the treatment feels as she flashbacks to when she is little and remembers the words of her nanny that she can choose to cry quietly and endure alone instead of in front of the servants and anyone will want to help her but they cannot touch her because she is too noble but someone will that understands her heart will appear and if he appears she should tell him to take her hands. She comes back to reality and asks for the name of the maid, to which the maid responds that she is Yvonne. The madam comments on the treatment being effective and asks the maid to give her an herbal compress the next day as well. This makes the maid surprised as she thinks she feels the pressure if the madam refused but the madam made a request to help first. 
This makes her happily as she finally has something to offer the madam making her concur with the madam's request while the madam wonders in thought that if the count falls in love with someone else, he wouldn't want to have children with her and her position would be at stake which makes her worry more about what to do and how she can survive. She is brought back to reality when the maid exclaims how beautiful her hand knitted lace is which she picks up from the floor and it is her first time seeing such a beautiful fabric. The madam is surprised by the maid's comment and finally smiles. She takes out the fabric and reveals that even without the count's heir or father or brother, she also has a weapon that gives her strength which is her handmade fabrics. Ten years ago, in Lajas, the capital of Severang, someone calls out to Zachary telling him to wait a minute. Zachary looks back while the man tells him he has long legs and walks so fast, then asks him if he is the son of Viscount Wigu which prompts Zachary to reply that the Hugh family took over the position and he is just a ruler of the Arno's estate. The man bows to him confirming he is the son of Wigu and calls him Baron Zachary de Arno. J.E. introduces himself as Gustava of Blanchefort full of smile on his face which makes Zachary's eyes widen in disbelief and he reveals that Count Blanchefort is the right arm of Prince Gother the loyal follower of Severang. Zachary bows to the Count of Blanchefort apologizing for his ignorance and rudeness while the Count smiles replying he chased Zachary first. The Count asks Zachary for some moments as he has been wanting to talk with him for a long time. At their meeting point, the Count offers Zachary flowering tea. He calls it a combination of flowers grown in the garden of the emperors and recently they soak flowers or tea leaves in hot water in a foreign country. Zachary stares at the tea while the Count expresses how pleased he is to spend time with a brave knight like Zachary. Zachary sips from the tea and asks if the Count have something to tell him which makes the Count smile as he sips his tea and responds that until now, he have served the Emperor with all his heart, also the first Prince Gother would become the next successor to Severang and he have never doubted his ability to become the new Emperor even once. While the second Prince Jacob has some forces supporting him as the Emperor and even if there are a few people, it is still not reassuring. He smiles and asks a wide-eyed Zachary if he will become the sword of the first prince. Zachary thanks the Count for his suggestion and expresses that he is just a chick who has been baronized, having no reputation so how will he dare dare stand by his highness side. The Count repeats Zachary's words and expresses how humble Zachary is and praises him saying Zachary is a black wolf of Severang who is on battlefield by himself from age 16 and earned himself a title of baron and finally exclaims that the reputation of that chick is great. The Count proceeds explaining to Zachary that he said Zachary will stay by His Highness of Gother's side now and in the future and it is him who will become the lifelong sword of the Empower, finally telling Zachary to reconsider. He asks Zachary outrightly again to serve His Highness of Gother with him. Zachary is deep in thought as the Count tells him Severang's bright future awaits him. Zachary finally speaks saying he will be loyal to no one else but the one who will surely become the Emperor in the future so he cannot say no to the suggestion. He bows to the Count's asking him to take care of him later while the Count smiles and tells Zachary to be nice to him. Zachary is alerted when he is informed that there is a proposal for him by the Count. The Count brightly asks what Zachary thinks about getting married, making Zachary confused as he asks if it is to the Count. The Count laughs and expresses how unbiased Zachary is but tells him he already has a wife making it a bit awkward, also announcing that he has a lovely daughter who is not married. He explains that when Zachary marries his daughter, they will no longer be just comrades but members of the Blanchefort family and he can support him by mobilizing all his connections and assets. The Count tells him the marriage will be worthwhile for him and hopes he makes good use of this opportunity. Zachary explains that Count Blanchefort's offer was difficult to refuse for the Count who was kicked out empty-handed and the marriage would obviously gain fame and fortune which is also a business in some way. Vincent is seen reading the dowry of 400 calves, 900 pigs, 100 silver bowls, 300 pieces of silk, a portion of the estate would be a two-year budget for the count which Vincent comments that Arno is not worthy of a bride who brings so much dowry making Zachary reply that he will have to try. He tells Vincent to send a letter to the place where dispatch was requested last month asking how much military funds are if Arno is dispatched to the military. He explains that if a marriage is like a business, then he would be like selling himself for the steed of Blanchefort. 
He finally meets his precious wife Bianca and seeing her face like that makes the Count think of so many things like the look of having a wife being taken good care of with those precious hands swollen. That night at the castle, the Count drove the yellow-haired maid out and hastily summoned the three commanders. Sir Robert nervously wonders what was so urgent, Gaspar thinks of the Aragon invading again while Sover thinks of just returning from the battlefield the previous day and thinks if he has to return back there again. They approach the front door and barge in ready for action only to meet the Count Zachary of Arno calm with Vincent, he is wearing an eyeglass and exclaim how fast they responded to his call. Robert asks what is wrong while Gaspar adds if Aragon invaded again but they are cut short by the Count who tells them this new task is more important and bigger. Robert and Gaspar narrow their faces thinking of what can be more important than war while Robert takes note of the Count's glasses and thinks of how cool the Count is even without the glasses on. Yvonne is seen treating the Countess hands as the Count informs the three commanders that he wants one of them to be his wife's escort which makes them surprised. Savio yells in terror that the task is even bigger than the military service while Robert and Gaspar wonders nervously as Sober asks why they must escort the Countess who is only in her room. Robert speaks asking if this new development is due to what happened earlier that day and expresses that the Count is afraid of it repeating itself again. This makes Sover freak out and ask if the Count is choosing someone to silence the witness if it happens again in the future or he needs someone to pay the victim an amount of settlement. The Count stares out of the windows and answers them all that he heard Bianca spend most of her days in her room but this happens as soon as she gets out of the room. He explains that in the future, he hopes his wife will not get hurt and that is why he wants to send one of his most trusted people to be by her side. Bianca's fine lace is shown as she keeps working on them with smiles on her face as the Count tells his commanders that in Arno Bianca deserves to be protected. The following day, at the Arno's castle, Yvonne is seen with a bowl of water with a towel in it and she walks to the madam's room, walks in and calls out to the madam while greeting her good morning but the madam is still deeply asleep. Yvonne goes to open the window for sunlight to come in as she thinks of the madam still sleeping and if she should wake her up but eventually decides not to disturb the madam as she takes the madam's hands for examination. She discovers the madam's hand is still swollen as she attempts to start the treatment and thinks the madam will get better soon if she sees a doctor. Yvonne wipes the madam's hands with the towel gently and happily. Yvonne did not think that her situation and the madam's situation are the same but she has a younger sister who is about the madam's age. Her sister is Lucy and she is married to a carpenter much older than her so she cannot see her often and any time she thinks of the madam she remembers her sister. The madam grabs the towel making Yvonne apologize for waking her but the madam counters that she should have woken up anyways and thanks Yvonne that she did not procrastinate. She asks Yvonne to help her change which makes Yvonne ask if she is going out which the madam confirms. The madam tells Yvonne that there is a lot of work to do today with a bright smile on her face. They both walk out of the room through the hallway, the madam thinks of being cold which Yvonne notices and tells her she left her fox fur coat in her room as she hurriedly rushes back to get it. Bianca smiles thinking of how observant Yvonne is and comments that she is smart and has a warm heart. She imagines what would happen if she had met Yvonne in her previous life, if the result would have been different. Bianca wakes herself up to reality and tells herself that assumption of it is no longer necessary, focusing on this new life is not enough time and she should not waste time regretting the past. In the butler workspace, Vincent calls out to the madam trying to understand what she is saying while the madam repeats that long before she came, Vincent had been taking good care of the household. Vincent nervously agrees while the madam cuts him that the duty is for the mistress but she could not because she is too young which the butler confirms once again. She points at herself saying she is 18 years old and she is old enough to take care of the mansion and the person who can teach her how to manage the mansion is no one else but him. She proceeds to call his name which is Beng Sang and asks him to teach her how to manage the mansion making him freak out a bit. He feels happy within him that the madam called him by his name for the first time. He gets serious and reasons that since the time she wore the white fox fur coat, something has changed, she no longer collects luxury items like before since she used to be very luxurious. 
Staring at the madam's face he proceeds to reason that yesterday's incident was also the servant's mistake even if the punishment is a bit excessive but that is the right way to deal with discipline without being indifferent. He drops his ink pen and thinks of her wanting to learn a job and knows that she is not talking in vain. He finally responds to her boldly to put her trust in him. He gets up from his seat as she stares at him. He opens the door for her saying it was said that there is no single view and he will take her around the territory and explain as he leads the way telling her to follow him. She smiles amazed and thinks of it not being easy to see a child in relation to the count and it has also been proven in the previous life, then she will start with those things she hasn't done in her previous life which is managing the castle of Arno. She decides in her imagination to start by studying and finding people that she will need in Arno if she can help Arno grow stronger with those people and the Count will understand that she has become a political partner and not a kid who does not know what to do. She is brought back to reality by the butler telling her he has something to say and it is about her escort. She exclaims surprise as the butler points at the three commanders and tells her one of them will be serving the madam from today. Sir Robert is nervous as the butler asks her if she met him yesterday. He introduces Sir Gasper as a reticent person and finally Sir Sover as a freeman. The butler asks the madam to make her choice but she rejects while the butler encourages her not to leave today's work for tomorrow. She is confused and she thinks of them being the count's chiefs and how she will pick as their faces are openly reluctant. She faces the butler and tells him she has him by her side and she wants to avoid running around in a fuss because of the crowd but the butler informs her that it is an order the count which makes her flashback to when she receives a letter as the order of the lord and the political partner of the one who has absolute power over the territory, exclaiming how far she has gone. She reasons for having to choose an escort, not anyone else but among the closest to his knight ordered by the count himself. She thinks of the escort being a good excuse but becomes terrified thinking if he wants to monitor her. She bows down her head in distress and unknowing to them, the Count is watching them from the room's window above them. It is explained that if everything that the madam is doing in the castle comes into the ears of the Count when there is a guard in the name of escort, can it be said that the madam and the Count are on equal footing as a couple in this Arno? The butler comes up with a mic announcing that one of the three important people is waiting for the madam's decision and will the escort make her life easier or on the contrary. The madam stands hands akimbo as the butler continues trying to get who the madam will choose. Bianca thinks of how the wife will have to live by her husband's rules for the rest of her life but the count has never asked her to do anything so she must think positively. She looks at Robert and remembers him refusing to listen to her and even stopping her yesterday and was also complaining as well. She reviews Gasper as being dangerous because he is huge and instead of saying meaningless words, he would keep quiet but she does not find it pleasant. Reviewing Sover she thinks he is a freeman and if that is the case she would have been the best but she breaks the thought saying she can never choose. She worries that even after she has lived two lives, she does not think she has ever made such a burdensome choice and wonders picking a person when she doesn't even like any of them. She is about to point out who her escort will be when she feels a pelt on her shoulders, she becomes nervous and imagines who that is, recollecting the Count doing that to her previously but to her surprise it is Yvonne. Yvonne apologizes saying she did not know she was here and went to the butler's room which took some time. The madam thanks Yvonne and tells her she has worked hard which makes Yvonne happily replies that she is alright as she is strong. Sover whispers to Robert asking who the cute maid is and talks about the madam being friendly which Robert replies to him saying they will get to that but the madam doesn't even remember his name and she knows the maid's name. The maid stares at them and smiles giving Sover pinky face as he smiles widely. The madam thinks of being thankful to Yvonne for making this stressful situation become less intense and thinks of why none of them is volunteering but just then Gasper raises his hands making the madam and Yvonne stare at him. He announces that he will become her escort, shocking Robert and Sover. The madam stares at him thinking of him looking like the count but she is not sure if he has similar thoughts as the count and even if he is the escort, she is uncomfortable that she does not know what his thoughts are. Robert and Sover whisper to Gasper asking if he meant what is said while the madam is relieved for not causing any chaos as she replies to the butler that she did not really mind. The butler folds his hand saying he understands and he announces that the madam's escort has been decided and it is Gasper. 
The butler informs them that they wasted time and wants to proceed to showing everyone the room but suddenly footsteps are heard calling out to Bianca which she turns to realize that it is the Count. He stares at her and examines her face well but she fires at him asking what is wrong and why would he stare into another person's face like that making him answer that he just wanted to meet her for a bit. He proceeds to touch her face as she moves back but he succeeds leaving everyone shocked and their jaws dropped. He feels her skin with his hand making her nervous while looking into his eyes and he finally breaks his silence that she has a fever. This alerts Yvonne as she looks at the madam and confirms that she truly has a fever due to her being out without a coat for too long. Robert stares at the Count's workspace and wonders if the Count has been watching them. The Count covers Bianca with his coat and discharges everyone telling them to go to their room and back to their work as he has something to say to his wife. He touches her shoulder causing her to fall in deep thoughts as she is still very perplexed. He escorts her to his workspace leaving everyone happy and shocked at the same time. In the hallway as the Count and his wife walks together, Bianca concludes in her mind that the Count clearly has something to say and thinks it is about the previous day and she imagines that maybe he wants her to apologize to the girl. She thinks of them being the lover of the century while he is playing with that love and she is all alone in her room. She stops and asks him what his excuse would have been if she did not have a fever making him stare at her as she tells him she will not apologize to the girl if he is asking her to as she has an ego too. She tells him that even if the maid is the woman, he loves she is still the Arno's lady but she is cut short by the count telling her he sent the maid away surprising her and making her ask why he did that. She yells at the count asking if he wants to take the last gleam of light out of her life which makes him stare at her blankly. He finally announces to her that he does not have any lover leaving her surprised but she stubbornly responds to the count that he is just trying to avoid and he may see her as a child but she cannot be fooled by those words. The count is silent for a while, he covers her face with his palm telling her he does not know how she sees him but he is ashamed to have a secret lover. He decides to finally blame it on the fever or he is saying it because something is wrong with his sight. He moves close to her saying he does not know whose heartbeat this is because it is too loud. What do you think will happen next? Will Bianca finally have an heir with the Count? If you want the next part, kindly leave a comment. Do not forget to like and subscribe for our future videos.